What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Wednesday, May 1st, 2024. That's right. It is the first day of May, a brand new month, and here we are. We have made it into another month. If you're watching this video, you have survived into the fifth month of the year. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Want to stay informed and stay safe? Subscribe to my channel down below. Want to help keep other people safe? Share this with anyone you know. Give this a thumbs up to help push this through the algorithm. The more thumbs up we get, the more likes we get, the more YouTube pushes this through the algorithm. Let's try for over 100 likes today. And of course, if you have anything to say, leave a comment down below or even post on my website. That's right. Some people do post on my website, datareport.info. It's a forum website where you can uh, find something you're looking for in regards to a COVID study, maybe something about COVID, or any of the other viruses, and some other stuff as well. Yesterday, Sean posted something on there, and we are going to actually share that with you because it's in relation to a story we talked about yesterday. But starting off today, H5N1 bird flu found at two more dairy farms in New Mexico, raising the U.S. total to 36. And take a look at this. Texas has 12 outbreaks. New Mexico has 8. Colorado, 1. Kansas, 4. Idaho reports, 2. You can see uh, South Dakota has 1. 6 in Michigan, 1 in Ohio, and 1 in North Carolina. We're starting to see this map fill in a little more. And I think it's going to continue to fill in. I can't say whether or not it's going to eventually be every state. And it could already be more widespread than we know about. But I think as time goes on, more and more of these states are going to start to pop up with outbreaks. All right, moving on now to this. Another new study about COVID is in. Stanford finds long COVID could make hangovers worse. That's right. If you're someone that likes to... You know, maybe it's a Friday night after work. You want to have a few things to drink. I don't drink alcohol, but maybe you're someone who does. Maybe you want to have a couple beers or something. Or maybe you had a little too much. Well, if you already suffer from long COVID, let's go down here a little bit. It says, Stanford University scientists say a morning after heavy drinking could be even worse for long COVID survivors. Are you someone suffering from long COVID? Have you had a hangover? afterwards from drinking is it worse than it normally would have been for some people some people describe that don't even drink i, I have heard this reference many of times people who don't drink saying long COVID to them in some cases is like having a hangover without even drinking anything i've heard that reference a few times but for many people hey if you have long COVID and you drink a lot you have a hangover the next morning it's worse than it would have been without having COVID. Remember now, long COVID can cause headaches. It can cause a lot of different things. Some of the symptoms that come with a hangover, you add the two together, hey, that could be making things worse. All right, I have to share this with you now. Remember yesterday, we talked about Thailand was seeing an increase in hospitalizations. Well, GV Twitter patted Posted on my website yesterday, this is some great content. Obviously, I'm not logged in right now. I'm the administrator of my website, so I stayed logged out. But um, we are going to show you one of these attachments that you can't see here in just a moment. And he says that I mentioned in today's update, meaning yesterday, that Thailand is experiencing a rise in COVID hospitalizations and deaths. And I wondered what variant they're dealing with. Well, guess what? We got the information here, and he posted some uh, data here and says the first graphic is Thailand's variant profile from the past six months, and the second is their variant profile since the beginning of the pandemic. 
and we can actually click on this to dig further. We're not going to do that. I'm going to eventually change this where guest will be able to view attachment. I'm pretty sure there's a setting I can change because everyone should be able to view this uh, data. But let's go over to that graphic now, and I want to show that to you. Take a look here. We can see here in Thailand in the past six months, look at this. Back in November, heading into December of last year, it was the JN.1 variant and continues to be the JN.1 subvariant. What we do not see here is if there are any further subvariants, but right now we do see that JN.1, look at this, it is just about 100% of the cases in Thailand right now. So they continue to see a wave and Given that they're near 100%, and given that they have seen such a quick rise now in hospitalizations, you would have to think that maybe they are coming near the peak. It's something we will continue to monitor. I'll let you know if I see any updates on it. Hopefully, maybe we can get some weekly updates on what's going on in Thailand. All right, back here in the United States. 45% of the country today is in medium to high status for pollen levels. That is an increase increase from yesterday. Yesterday was in the 30s. And you can see, if you're going along the I-80 corridor, maybe even the I-70 corridor, yes, right along that corner, there's a pretty large swap of red. Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, portions of Michigan, much of Pennsylvania, much of Maryland, much of New Jersey, parts of New York State, North Dakota, South Dakota, you're all in the red today. Even parts of the western portion of Oklahoma, western Kansas, hey, Colorado, you're in the red today. Florida, you're not doing too bad today. Texas, not terrible. Some moderate in California, Oregon, and Washington, but not as bad as the quarter that I first mentioned. And if you head up to Maine, I don't know, is your are you having a late spring? I don't think you are, but hey, your pollen levels are still low. Maybe you are that delayed with the pollination process in your plants and trees. All right, moving on now, taking a look here at what's going on with air qualities, and we will see that it's kind of a mixed bag. We still do have a few minor hiccups in the northeast along the i-95 corridor not as bad as previous days texas around san antonio and houston yeah your air quality is pretty bad i haven't checked for wildfires someone let me know down below do you know of something that's causing your air quality to be so bad today especially san antonio and austin that seems to be the epicenter in texas houston not as bad and you can see here in some of these rural texas areas there's really not that many uh meters and sites that we can uh, actually measure what the air quality is. I wish there was more out there, but really in those areas, there's not much population. California, it's actually doing better than it's been in a while. Still a few hiccups, but not as bad. Great Lakes is okay. Just some minor, really, minor, nothing really much to speak about in Florida today. And other than that, not much to talk about. Taking a look at EMS calls in Philadelphia, I think we need to refresh this. Yes, we do. And by the way, someone asked me yesterday in a comment when I uh, quote retweeted the Philadelphia Fire Department, is this more calls than last year? You know, I sometimes like to challenge that if I can find something. In this case, I could. I went back and looked at last year, and it was actually for that date last year, it was actually about 200 calls higher. But remember, there's a lot of factors. One, we came from the second biggest COVID wave ever over winter. Two, it was darn well 90 degrees, near 90 degrees. Well, no, it did hit 90 degrees on Monday. So, I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into why calls could have been so high. It could have been dehydration, breathing difficulty. But when we take a look at today's call, yes, the calls did drop, but they are still way too high. And you know my threshold. I always say anything over 800, that's a concerning day. Well, 876, that's close enough to 900 once again. That's just another bad day, and it wasn't as hot yesterday, so this is concerning. I'm going to have to f do some uh, deeper digging to find out what's going on. Doing a live look in at Montgomery County right now. We see multiple respiratory emergency calls. Not one, not two, but three, and we do see other problems like heart issues, you know, cardiac emergencies, diabetic emergencies. Uh, general weakness. Overall, right now, there are 15 calls. That's pretty busy for 5.54 in the evening. We're late in doing our update today. Take a look at Chester County. Hopefully, I can report better news out of Chester County. No, I cannot report uh, better news out of Chester County. Wow. Overdose, assault. Uh, yeah, a lot of things going on here. Ooh. 
dead on arrival. That's never a good call. That's in East Goshen Township, Pennsylvania. And taking a look here, yes, there's also a sick person. There's quite a few calls going on right now in Southeast Pennsylvania. Taking a look at Walgreens. We'll do a few states here, then we'll move on to some wastewater sites. The national COVID positivity trend at Walgreens is 12.6%. Prior week was 13%. Difference of down 0.4%. Total tests, 3,941. The prior week was 4,488. Let's take a look at what is going on in Utah today. Utah is 12.9% COVID positivity rate, 10% the prior week, down by, or excuse me, up upward by 2.9 percent but if we zoom in here they are starting up down up down pattern and the overall trend is downward 31 tests versus 30 so that is a little bit concerning how about missouri missouri 6.9 percent positivity rate this week the previous week was 11.1 percent that is down by 4.2 percent 72 tests versus 90 so uh yes that is downward but if we take a look at the chart here you can see here ever so slightly it may start trending upward pretty soon. North Carolina, 9.6% positivity rate this week. The previous week was 10.2%. That's a difference of down 0.6%. 177 tests versus 244. And I say we should do one more state. Let's do Michigan. Michigan, 19.5% this week, 14% last week, up 5.6%. Total tests, 87 versus 93. Testing is down. That's why you're seeing a rise. All right, let's do four wastewater sites. We'll do one from each region, I think, or something like that. Let's do one in the northeast. And how about we come up here to New Jersey? Let's see what's going on up in Newark, New Jersey. And in Newark, New Jersey, we do see this is a big wastewater site, 1.5 million population. COVID levels, they're low at this time. RSV is low. Influenza A, eh, they're saying it's medium at this time. Influenza B is dropping. I'm not concerned that it's as high. I think that's incorrect. HMPV is dropping at this time. Norovirus is still high. Eh, it's close to being over 50,000 pathogens. Mpox, there have been some detections of Mpox at the end of April. And detections of hepatitis A. All right, moving on to the south now. Let's go south, but let's not go too far south. Let's see what's going on in North Carolina. We looked at you on Walgreens. What comes up in Winston-Salem, 92,000 population wastewater site? And we can see here, low for COVID. RSV is low at this time. Influenza A is dropping. Influenza B is really low. HMPV, look at that. You are seeing a rise for that. Medium for norovirus, but it's trending lower. You're going to be low pretty soon. And a few detections of Mpox that go back to February and early April, and several hepatitis A detections at this time. All right, two more wastewater sites, and I think we should go out to the West Coast. Let's go out and see what's going on in Las Vegas. And in Las Vegas, we can see here COVID, low. RSV, low. Influenza A, it rose a little bit. Influenza B is also rising a little bit. Norovirus was rising, now it's starting to drop. HMPV is rising slightly. Mpox, just a few detections and several detections of hepatitis A. And let's go further north now. How about we go northeastward? Let's see what's going on. What's this wastewater site here now? How about we come up here see what's going on in the St. Cloud area? I cannot remember the last time we looked at this wastewater site, which is one of the reasons why I kept looking for it. All right, St. Cloud, 120,000 population. You can see here COVID levels. Eh, they rose a little bit, but not terribly concerning. RSV is dropping. Most recent update shows it may be trying to rise. Influenza A, it's rising at this time. That's not good. Influenza B is dropping. Or it's still dropping, just not as fast. HMPV was dropping. Norovirus was. Now it's slowed down and maybe starting to rise. And it is still in moderate to high levels. Some detections of Mpox and Hepatitis A. Taking a look at some CDC data. Hospital admissions are dropping. They're down by 14.4%. 5,615 in the past week. The latest variant in the United States here is KP.2 at 24.9%, JN.1 at 22%, JN1.7 at 13.7%, and then there's a whole bunch more variants below that. 
taking a look now at what's going on in New Jersey. 186 hospitalizations, three people on a ventilator, 20 people in the ICU, and 15 discharges. I do have an ever so slight concern today over yesterday, just a day over day concern. They're at 186 hospitalizations with six hospitals not reporting. Mm, would have liked to seen the hospitalization number a little bit lower, but again, when we, overall, when we take a look at New Jersey, they're not really going anywhere. They've been slowly dropping, but now it has slowed down somewhat. I imagine if six other hospitals reported, this number could be closer to 200. Another ever so slight concern. Actually, it probably won't amount to anything, but we have to tell you about it. 390 people tested positive in New York State. Okay, that's not the concern. And remember, that does not include these at-home tests. Taking a look here, the hospitalizations, they were dropping, but now they have really slowed down. They're not going very far. I'm still hopeful that this week, New York State can drop below 400 hospitalizations, but we'll see. They had a little bit of a rise today. It went from 420 to 433, the number of people in the ICU did drop to 38, but we have to take a look at some other areas. New York City, and again, this may not amount to anything. New York City, and I have to zoom this back in. Here we go. Uh, New York City is seeing a slight increase. Again, just day over day, so that's what we're looking at here. Yesterday was actually a little bit lower than they ended on Friday last week, but today did see a jump higher than, let's see here, yeah, today's jump is higher than any point last week. How about the previous week? No, just last week. 187 people in the hospital, 21 people in the ICU. Again, that is up from 166. So again, that's up by about 19. And Long Island also saw a small increase. They went from 49 to 52. One person in the ICU to two people in the ICU. We'll see if they start dropping again tomorrow in New York State and in all of these regions of New York State. And if they don't, well, we'll just keep watching it. I mean, at some point, there is going to be another wave. I just don't know if that's going to be now or, like last year, post-4th of July come summertime. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. All right, one more thing to share with you today, and that is Colorado. Colorado is now down to 75 people hospitalized and cases reported this week. 536. That is actually up by 46. So their cases went up a little bit. Not terribly concerning. It's only a small rise and hospitalizations continue to drop. But do remember, hospitalizations lag cases. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update. We'll have another Pandemic Update again tomorrow. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel down below. Share this with anyone you know. Got something to say? Leave a comment down below. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe everyone and have a fantastic Wednesday evening. Thanks for watching.